From keeping the peace to leading the fight, African Union troops on the offensive in Somalia. But the threat from al-Shabaab is growing. Now the U.S. is targeting them in drone strikes. So where now for the war-torn country? And can the transitional government pull together at last? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Shuli Ghosh. Some 3,000 Ugandan soldiers have arrived in Somalia to help government forces battle al-Shabaab. Last month, the mandate of the AU mission was expanded from peacekeeping to enforcement of peace. It means AU soldiers can lead the onslaught against al-Shabaab, and they say they're making significant headway in the battle for control of Mogadishu. From the capital, Mohamed Ado reports. Beyond passive peacekeeping, this is what members of the African Union mission in Somalia, AMISOM, do these days. Taking advantage of a recent change in its rules of engagement, AMISOM is now taking the war to the Al-Shabaab militias. The mandate has been so useful to us because now we have options of pursuing Al-Shabaab. We are no longer restricted. We're no longer restricted. We can just go on the offensive, get them, and enforce uh, peace. We secure the area. The peacekeepers take no chances. Every building and tunnel they capture is carefully examined. They search for explosives and booby traps left behind by their opponents. They also travel in armed personnel carriers to try to avoid roadside bombs and landmines. But the peacekeepers are fighting these battles almost single-handedly. Their partners, Somali government troops and allied militias, are challenged in many ways. Discipline is an ongoing problem. These men were detained on suspicion of stealing, then selling ammunition. They had also been stealing our guns. It is punishable. If you go and sell ammunition, it is punishable. You don't need to sell ammunition. Now Amisom is paying them some, uh, some little money. That's good enough. So why do you sell ammunition? The African Union peacekeepers have also surrounded Bakara market, Mogadishu's biggest market and perhaps Al-Shabaab's most important base. Depriving Al-Shabaab of the revenue they believe could tip the economic balance in favor of the government, which already controls the seaport and the airport. Mohamed Ado for Inside Story, Mogadishu. So let me introduce our guests today. In Oslo, Stig Hansen, an associate professor in international relations at the Norwegian University of Life Sciences. He's also the author of the book Borders of Islam. And in London, Mohamed Gure, he's the chairman of the Somali Concern Group, a voluntary organization. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Uh, Stig, let me start with you. Uh, Amisom have in the past been criticized for not doing enough uh, to keep the peace in Somalia. Do you think the extension of their rules of engagement will help with that? Um, to keep the peace, uh, I'm not so sure. Uh, I think that uh, they have good chances of defeating the Shebabs and even conquering Mogadishu. But the problem is, of course, what to do next. Uh, and uh, they have to have larger numbers and they have to have allies in the TFG that can provide security and safety for the ordinary Somalis. And I'm not entirely convinced that, that they have the, uh, that ally yet. Uh, do you think that they can drive al-Shabaab from Mogadishu? Absolutely, they are able to do that. But the question is, what happens afterwards? And I think afterwards they will fight, uh, face an insurgency. And I also am unsure if they can provide law and order in that city after taking, uh, you know, uh, defeating the Shebabs. So there is a lot of dilemmas in expanding. Uh, one thing is to defeat the Shebabs on the battlefield, and another thing is to face the insurgency that follows and to try to give law and order to ordinary Somalis. Mohammed, let me bring you in. What do you think is the feeling of ordinary Somalis that uh, the, the mandate of the AU has now been expanded from being able to be uh, more offensive in chasing out al-Shabaab? Well, uh, the mood has always been one of a mixed uh, uh, reaction of what is going on in Somalia. I mean, uh, most of the people do favor an effective uh, combat um, Amazon uh, uh, forces that takes 
Shabab out of uh, uh, drive Shabab out of Mogadishu and all of Somalia. But unfortunately, as uh, the other guest said, um, the dilemma is not with uh, with uh, Amazon. The dilemma is with the Somali uh, government, the TFG. Uh, the Somali forces are poorly trained. The Somali forces are poorly dis disciplined, and they need to be restructured. And uh, uh, Amazon can conquer and take parts of uh, boroughs in Mogadishu, but then you need uh, Somali forces who are ready to capitalize that and, and, and contain it. Of course, Shabab will, ha will, will eventually become an insurgency rather than a fighting force. And, and to deal with that, you have to have disciplined, trained Somali counterparties who, who take over from uh, areas that uh, Amazon, um, um, you know, um, and takes over. So uh, the people have welcomed um, the, the military gains of the last uh, past two months, and, and they were very sad when uh, the government, the technocratic government um, that has um, uh, tried to restructure and probe up the, 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 the Somali forces were dismissed. And it is now not clear where to go from now since uh, the political entangling and uh, power struggle between the speaker of the parliament and the president is just starting again okay uh, let's uh, at this point just remind our viewers about who shabab are and what they want al shabab is an armed group that grew out of other islamist militias that have been battling the transitional government since 2006 and they want to impose sharia law across somalia the united states has linked them to al qaeda they consider President Sheikh Sharif a traitor for agreeing to head an internationally backed government. And recently the group claimed responsibility for the bomb attack that killed the country's interior minister, saying it was part of their holy war against the Somali government and African Union peacekeepers. The group controls most of southern Somalia and large parts of the capital Mogadishu. Uh, Stig, how, how strong does al-Shabaab remain, do we know? Uh, we have some some indications. Uh, over the last uh, year or so, they had some problems starting after the Ramadan offensive uh, last year. So they used a lot of money and they spent a lot of lives in various campaigns inside of Mogadishu. So the organization has been shaken. However, what we know about the Shebab is that very often when they are pressured, they will uh, do, um, do drastical things like suicide attacks. And uh, the big uh, paradox for us is that if Shebab is defeated, if Shebab is driven out of Mogadishu and uh, defeated in the southern Somalia, we might have a more radical organization. We should also remind ourselves that Shebab controls large areas outside of Mogadishu, including the very profitable Kismayo port, which uh, gives them a lot of income. Uh, OK, uh, let me introduce at this point uh, our third guest, who's uh, now joined us, Omar Jamal. Good to have you with us. He's the uh, first secretary of the Somali mission to the United Nations. Um, glad you could, uh, you could join us, uh, Omar. Uh, just talk to us about the uh, expanded mandate of Amazon in uh, Somalia and what impact you think that's going to have. Well, thank you very much, Anam. I'm sorry I've been late a little bit, but uh, uh, to answer that question, I think the extended mandate reflects the, the, the situation and the, and the crisis within al-Shabaab. It, it, it was really a bit strange where uh, Amazon troops can fire only when they are fired at. They cannot pull the trigger until someone else shoot at them. Now what you have is they can go out at least for really short, foreseeable time, bring the capital city under control, uh, bring back the law and order, uh, build the judicial and court system, uh, bring life back to some level of normality. So I, I, uh, one of the most important thing that we're emphasizing and the government, I think, now focused on is opening the humanitarian corridor, to open up the humanitarian corridor and maintaining those spaces, making sure that people are, are being fed, They've been provided shelter and basic service. So I think this extended mandate, if anything else, will be able to facilitate in the government to provide security and food and shelter to those who are in need. Omar, our two other guests, though, have pointed out that the problem comes in the next stages. You drive al-Shabaab out of Mogadishu. What happens then? You could have an insurgency on your hands in the rest of the country. Well, I think you have to do one thing at a time. Uh, Somalia is recovering from one of the most devastating civil war for the last 20 years. We're digging ourselves out of the hole. 
Uh, uh, so I think now what we do is the issue of survival. What do you do in order to survive for the next day? Uh, yes, we have insurgents in the country. Yes, we have terrorist organization uh, that controls most of the part of the South. Uh, but I think to, to, to focus on bringing some part of the country, mainly the capital city, under control uh, by this expanded mandate, uh, yes. Uh, and if, if, if anything else the country now is very familiar with, that Somalia, is, is the issue of uh, insurgents issue of suicide bombing. We've seen that for the last 10 years, and I think nothing will change. That will continue. Uh, no, nobody is suggesting that this will be taken care of overnight. Mm. Mohammed, what do you think of that? Because uh, it's not just a problem with al-Shabaab, is it? There are also, there's also the issue of the, 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 the weakness of the transitional government. Well, it is, absolutely. I mean, the strength of al-Shabaab comes from the weakness of the government. Had the government been is strong enough, had the government had a strong leadership, had the government had a plan, a vision uh, to conquer, had the government had a plan to even uh, divide a shabab. A shabab is not one solid body of, uh, of, 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 of fighter. A shabab is a divisible. A shabab are, are, there are different groups with different agendas within shabab. So if we had a leadership with a vision and, and a plan to do that, not only the military, uh, you know, mil mil military um, uh, side of, of the conflict, the political side of the conflict could have uh, achieved more significantly than what we could not achieve militarily. At the end of the day, every conflict is solved through dialogue and peaceful means, not by military. It, it, it will take a long, long time to uh, er eradicate a shabab altogether. But until we achieve that, we have to find a way to neutralize a shabab at least divide them. There are groups who used to be uh, friends and comrades of uh, the, the current president. Those people c uh, can still be contacted. They can be lured if they if they if they are given uh, you know the right tools and the right things they are they are asking for. So it is the government's failure and and, le and poor leadership that a shabab is, is surviving and a shabab is flourishing, with with. Uh, with, with, with a strong leadership and with a strong intent, uh, with a strong intent of, 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 of the Somali part and a, a more coherent and more aggressive uh, Amazon contingency, I think uh, Al-Shabaab can be uh, significantly uh, bl blown away. But again, you will have the consequence of having insurgency and suicide bombers in the short run. But in the long run, the people, the Somali people themselves, will point fingers to where the Shawab are located and they can be dealt with in a few years' time. Okay, well, just on that issue of the, uh, the, the weakness yeah. of the government, do you agree okay. with that, okay. Stig? Yes. Uh, I tell you a very quick story. Last time I visited well, Mogadishu. Uh, you know, I was in the government controlled areas, and basically the police, they had a small war with their uh, own forces over a checkpoint. Basically, some of the police didn't pay uh, other forces in the police uh, to, to, to loan that checkpoint and collect the money in that checkpoint. Well, what I'm afraid of in this expansion uh, is that the police of the transitional federal government is not mature enough to handle that expansion, because it has been highly predatory. There has been reasons for this, basically that they didn't get the adequate pay. Uh, it, this has become better, but I'm really afraid that this can happen again. And I really, uh, I'm quite positive when our friend from the TFG here says that they will emphasize the justice sector, because that's very important. And I think that's also gets Shebab's uh, supporter, because Shebab, their brand name has been local justice, you know, Sharia justice. So it's important that the police functions when you want to control a city. Very important. Omar, it is the case, isn't it, that the transition government has well, been perceived let, let, as a failure by people in Somalia? Well, let me put it this way, uh, is, is that the simple question is now, as this thing is in Mogadishu city right now, are we better off now than we were four or five years ago? Yes. Things are progressing very slowly. And, and, and yes, the government uh, are now putting things back into pieces that has been completely not there for the last 20 well, years. Well, when you say we, the government we, is, is progressing, I mean, they, they haven't progressed on, on security, on stability, on constitutional progress, on parliamentary reform. I mean, none of those have been completed. 
Right. And, and, and one of the reasons that the government, however, is slow, uh, that has been very problematic, is that the, some form of internal bickering among the TFG uh, uh, top leadership and the parliamentarian members. Yeah, and it I looks mean, specifically like right now we're getting between over the president that and, and the speaker. Yeah. There have been, there's been divisions between the president and the speaker think, of parliament. Well, I think, well, uh, to be fair enough, I believe that that issue has been completely resolved. The government now is committed and focusing on doing a real work on the ground. I think we don't have to go back to yesterday. Where we are right now is the prime minister resigned, the president appointed a new prime minister with the blessing of the speaker, and, and the prime minister get overwhelming. Uh, parliamentarian vote of confidence. I think now is the best time to move forward and, 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 and try to bring the regionists on board, bring Buntaland, bring Galmuduk, bring other regionists on board, bring the security and humanitarian issues. I think, yes, the government, maybe I agree to the point that maybe the strength of Al Shabaab comes from the weakness of TFG, but TFG has been an experiment. Uh, in a country that has been devastated by civil war, famine, uh, internal displacement. We, we need to understand the history that brought the country the way it is today. By having that in mind, I think we can understand how things are there. But if you ignore that picture and, and, and think Somalia as, if, uh, as it is a country in Europe or Middle East where everything is intact, I think that would, be, that would not be fair okay. analysis okay. to a but, country but it is, that has been completely it devastated. It is also the case that there are signs that the international community is uh, becoming exasperated with this experiment, as you call it. In May, the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said the Security Council was losing patience with Somalia's leadership. He said the transitional federal institutions must show real progress on key tasks such as constitution making, political outreach, reconciliation, the provision of basic services and improvements in security. Uh, Mohammed, do you think that international patience is, is wearing thin? The international community has shown a willingness and some commitment, not full commitment, but some commitment to help Somalia, you know, probably itself. But unfortunately, Somalia is very, was very unlucky always. We had a, a, a transition of 11 years. We are in, our, in, in, this, in, in the 12 years now, a 12 years of transition. And all that transition and all that, all that time, the international community was trying to help, the, other, the regional organization was trying to help, the international organization was trying to help. But unfortunately, it is the Somali leadership who failed the Somalia and who failed the, uh, the, the initiatives and the support of the international community. They have every right to say that. And uh, it is the, the, the political uh, pickering and, and, and personalization of the Somali conflict. It, it, the, the, whole, so the whole TFG uh, system now has well, become a show for two, for two uh, opposing uh, men, uh, two friends, the two Sharif is the president and the speaker of the parliament, because of each one of, two of them is trying to survive in the political arena, and each one is trying to get rid of the other by siding with some countries in the, in the, in the how region. How do you answer so that, uh, the, that the accusation, Omar? The, so, so, so there is, there is basic, there is basically, uh, uh, there is basically a big, big, big problem. There is basically a big problem okay. for the current, for the coming prime minister because he has to deal with uh, with the two opposing uh, heavyweights, and he cannot be neutral. He will be he, if he sides okay, one, in one side. Let me bring Omar into re so to respond well, well, to that. It will be extremely I, I think, difficult. Well, 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 uh, uh, well, well. Uh, I think if we have been following the events in the country for the last couple of days is that the president uh, delivered his promise by appointing a very competent prime minister and the speaker of the parliament delivered his promise by having the parliament approve the new prime minister overwhelmingly. I think, it's, again, one more thing. I have heard so many people talking about the leadership. There has not been a single event in the history of humankind where a single leadership did anything major without having a teamwork, without having the people involved. This is not about the leadership. Why it's about the failure the of the Why Somali people. The Somalis are responsible. The Som well, you, you have to show the willingness. You have, to, you have to work. You have to sacrifice. You have to show the commitment. You have to show the, the honesty of professionalism. The point is, if we just point a finger to a leadership and forget the rest, 
it was not that's not right let, let, let me bring, uh, people have failed I can see that Stig wants so to jump in here well, what's your point Stig it's uh, again it's the point that if you want to have the loyalty of the Somali people you have to give something in return and and so far it has been really little that has been coming uh, forward from the TFG over the last three or four months maybe we saw an improvement uh, but uh, you know it's it's going very slow it has been very little that has uh, been coming forward and again you know it's a major pr problem with the police and it's a major problem with internal corruption. And, and, and Al-Shabaab Al uh, itself be has been capitalising on that, hasn't it? I mean, it's been trying to win popularity by yes. providing food and aid Indeed. to some of the, the thousands and thousands yeah. of displaced yeah. Somalis. You, you can see in their propaganda videos, you know, earlier they showed TFG police plundering, uh, you know, and they showed themselves providing aid. You know, that's the trademark of the Shebab, you know, to give some kind of local justice for, for ordinary people. Wh whatever you say, you know, that, that's, that's how their propaganda works. Yeah, they, they've certainly caught the attention of the U.S., haven't they? There, but, there was that drone they, but, strike but in is, Somalia uh, quite recently. Are Al-Shabaab perceived as being able to uh, but, expand outside Somalian borders? I think that, uh, you know, uh, Al-Shabaab in general is very locally focused, but some of their uh, some of their recruits are definitively recruited in the region. Uh, so, so they have been some training of uh, Kenyans, and there has been some training of Tanzanians, and there has been some trainings of Ugandans. Uh, but their focus is mainly on Somalia. Sorry, Omar, I interrupted you there. What, what well, were you the, saying? One thing I... I uh, no, no. What, what I'm saying is that we have Al-Shabaab in Somalia, not only Al-Shabaab, we have a piracy issue where young guys are going out into the ocean hijacking a civilian ships for ransom. We have all these problems simply because of the complete disintegration of the Somali state in 1991. Somali state completely collapsed and there was a political vacuum there. So what we have is insurgents, piracy, complete anarchy and, and, and law and order. So to, 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 to bring the state back, to, to, to do that, I think is a daunting task. And I think we would like anyone who sacrifices and say that I, we will try to bring the Somali state back on its feet. And I think it's very, very challenging and it's very difficult. OK, well, in fact, the, the, the transitional government's been given another year, hasn't it, to allow it more time to complete its reforms. Do you think it can enhance political stability in that time? Which, yes, which I think both including the international community and the Somali diaspora have shown a tremendous support. The, the prime minister promised... Uh, some new political uh, vision that will bring the country back. The president is on board, the speaker is on board, and the different regions in the country are also joining. So I think I see a light at the end of the tunnel right now, and I think they deserve to be given the chance to see what they're going to deliver. Mohammed, do you see the light at the end of the tunnel? Well, I'm not so sure. I'm, I, I hope Omar sees something I don't see, but I, I can tell you one thing. Uh, the, the next, the, 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 the 12 months extension for the TFG, for the two uh, uh, heavyweights in, in the government, was, is just, uh, will, will be used um, as a space um, for them to engineer and, uh, you know, um, stay in power. So what we will see is in the next three months, I, well, I, 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 in a new political pickering within the TFG, particularly the president and, and the speaker, there is a, a, a very competent prime minister now appointed, but unfortunately, I don't think he will have the, the opportunity to uh, form his own team and, and work and continue with the work that has done his predecessor. His predecessor was working hard, but unfortunately, he has been removed. He was told he's, you know, not, not because he's incompetent, but he's told he's too over incompetent, he's too competent to, and he's, to leave the, his post. So uh, I, I don't see. Uh, the next 12 months is the TFG accomplishing any of its any of the the the, the items on the table. But what I will see is perhaps the Somali people and the national community um, trying to come up with some sort of a plan to save uh, the TFG and to move forward from uh, for behind beyond the 12 uh, the coming 12 months. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for that. We're going to have to leave it there. Fascinating discussion. Thank you to all my guests today, Omar Jamal. Stig Hansen and Mohamed Gure. And thanks to you at home for joining us. If you have any comments about today's show, do email us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. But for the moment, from me, Shiri Ghosh, bye-bye for now.